Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a review and flip through of Bible Road Trip Year One. This looks like an amazing deep dive into God's Word and I cannot wait to start using it with my kids. I've wanted to use this curriculum for the last year and I'm so excited that I finally have my hands on it and that we can start diving into it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around the camera and give you guys a look inside. All right, you guys, so this is Bible Road Trip Year One made by Thinking Kids Press. The author is Danica Cooley, and this is the teacher's guide. So they have a few different options as far as purchasing goes. You can get the digital pack or you can get the, um, the printed version. Now, this does have quite a bit of papers, so if your printer isn't very good, then I would recommend purchasing their physical copies. But if you have a printer that is great on ink, then save yourself some money and go ahead and get the digital pack, especially if you think you're gonna be using this um, multiple times with multiple kids. Now, as far as cost goes, um, I don't wanna bore you guys with you know too long of a tangent on how much things cost. For the digital teacher's book, it is $35 to $125, depending on whether you want the family set or just an individual set. Uh, as far as the printed teacher book, depending on what set you want, whether it be individual or family, it is $68 to $238. Now, uh, if you get the accompanying student notebooks, the digital pack is $25 to $40. Again, that just depends on the grade level that you're purchasing for. If you are wanting the printed student books, then those are anywhere from $68 to $89. Now, this is year one of a three-year curriculum. It takes a classical approach, and it is a deep dive into the Bible. And in this first year, you will be covering books from Genesis all the way to Esther. Now, this Bible curriculum pairs reading scripture with memorization, notebooking, crafts, research projects, depending on uh, the level that you are working with, global prayers, uh, additional books, and some videos. This is a 32-week long curriculum and is geared towards doing it as a family with five different levels ranging all the way from pre-K up until 12th grade. The way these levels are broken up is preschool and kindergarten, lower grammar for grades one to three, upper grammar for grades four to six, dialectic from grades seven to nine, and rhetoric, which is grades 10 to 8, 12. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are notebooking journals that you can purchase that will coordinate with the teacher's guide as well as memory verse cards to help with memorization. These aren't required to have in order to successfully use the curriculum though. But I will say that they are nice to have as it gives your child an already made notebook to use for their daily questions and assignments. And I'll show you guys a quick glance inside at the end of this teacher's guide flip through. Now, studying the actual Bible is the heart of this curriculum, so it is suggested for each child to have their own Bible. There are additional books that are recommended to use, and while they're not required, they will help enhance the teachings that you're gonna cover. So let's go over what you can expect in each level. So for preschool and kindergarten, you will focus on gaining familiarity. Uh, you'll cover topics such as sin and salvation, and you'll teach them that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you'll do this through read-alouds, crafts, uh, simple scripture memorization, and some fun videos. For lower grammar students, so those are going to be your grades 1 to 3, it will be all about building a framework to understand what the Bible is. They will use visual resources, some fun songs, and some hands-on crafts. For upper grammar students, so those are who are in grades four to six, they will be gathering knowledge as they make their way through God's word. 
they will have some independent work. They'll have notebooking. Uh, it's designed for them to develop higher thinking skills. They will start to cultivate research skills and strengthen their comprehension as well as retention. Sorry, you guys, it keeps getting stuck on my binder clips. Now, for the dialectic stage, which is going to be grades 7 to 9, they will learn to develop some research skills, make connections, and to stand on their own faith. They will be notebooking, conducting many research projects, a timeline, and will be challenged to pray for believers around the world. As far as the rhetoric stage, so that's going to be your grades 12, um, 10 through 12, this is where your child will gain more responsibility going throughout the curriculum to really dig deeper into their faith, to own it and develop their walk with Christ even further. They will be challenged with a three-year project where they are to create either a blog or a vlog, and this can be public or it can be private, or they can choose to lead their own Bible road trip group as a way to encourage them to share their faith. The author does put emphasis that any of these levels can be changed to meet your child where they're at on their developmental levels. Now, as well as to not feel pressured if you don't want to do the crafts or notebooking or any of the other activities. It's perfectly fine to just focus on reading God's word and discussing it together. Now, as far as the week's lessons are structured, you'll read one book of the Bible or a portion of one book per week, and there will be three sections you'll work your way through. The first section entails digging deeper by researching and reading the word. The second includes meditating on it, meaning you'll memorize scripture, you'll notebook and pray about the word. And then the third is exploring it further, where your child will learn more about the word and do crafts that correlate with whatever scripture they're reading that week. Now, as far as covering tough passages in the Bible, the author says that for some of the dicier sections, those are removed from the reading plan for the lower and upper grammar levels. And... Um, since I have not gone through this curriculum in our homeschool yet, I'm not sure how that is approached when it does arrive, but she does mention that it's best to be upfront and honest with your kids um, just regarding the things that can be challenging to talk about. And once they do get to the dialectic and rhetoric stages, that is where they will be uh, introduced to those subjects. Now, there are suggested schedules for each grade, and the nice thing is that these are broken up by activities. All right, forgive me, you guys. My camera died there for a bit. So if there are activities that you don't want to do, then you know how to account for that and plan your time wisely. Now, as far as time-wise, for preschool and kinder, you're looking at anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes a day, depending on the activity suggested and 40 to 60 minutes for lower grammar, about 70 to 80 minutes for upper grammar, and 90 minutes for dialectic, and then 85 to 110 minutes a day for the rhetoric stages. All right, you guys, so that is all of the information on this curriculum that I have for you. Uh, since we're getting pretty far into it and close to the end, I think I'm going to stop the flip through here and give you guys a look at what an actual lesson looks like and then compare it to the notebooking journals so you can see if you just want the teacher's guide or if you also want to incorporate those journals. All right, so this will be uh, the first lesson. So the way it works is each color, it corresponds to a separate grade. So this is gonna be the preschool and kindergarten page for the first lesson. This is the lower grammar. This one is upper grammar, the dialectic, and then the rhetoric. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick glance at the lower grammar and upper grammar since that is what um, I will be having this year. But if you have any questions on any of the other levels, then just let me know and I'll answer them as best as I can down below in the comment section. 
So as far as the lower grammar, so they will research the word by reading a supplemental book, which is 66 books, one story. They're going to read pages 9 through 10, which is the introduction. So tools to teach the Bible, parent-teacher read, help your kids learn and love the Bible, pages 9 through 22. So this is a book written by Danica Cooley, and it's not something that's required. It's just giving you basically additional tools to help your children uh, be guided along their walk in faith. Now, uh, memorizing the word, they're going to go ahead and memorize Psalms chapter 119 verses 10 through 12. Uh, learning more about the word, they can read Guarding the Treasure pages 9 to 14. Uh, it says download printable instructions with a Bible verse card for an Armor of God costume craft in the Family Discipleship section at thinkingkidspress.com. You'll find a fun Armor of God unit study there too. Uh, learning more about the Word, watch What's in the Bible DVD chapter number one in the beginning part one and then you're going to ask why is the Bible a library? How many books does it have? How many writers were there? And then it says notebooking about the word. So in your notebooking journal, share some observations about the parable of the sower, write a few notes about the wise builder and the foolish builder, and label your spiritual armor. And then it says crafting through the word. So this is where you're going to get some different ideas on crafts. So it says make your own sword of the spirit from cardboard and paint or decorate it. Write Psalm chapter 119 verse 11. Paint a picture of two houses before and after a storm. Put one on a foundation of rock and the other on a foundation of sand. Make a storybook about the parable of the sower. Fold pieces of paper to create your book and use cardstock for the cover. Label the cover of your book with scripture passages. Illustrate the seed on the path, rocky soil amongst thorns, and on good soil. So all of these additional things like the parent book, the 66 books, one story, the crafts even, the DVD, and the additional reading book, don't get overwhelmed, you guys. These are not things that you have to have. These are just ideas to incorporate and kind of solidify the things that you're going over. But if you don't want to do all of these different things, you could literally you know, read the scripture for the day, memorize the Bible passage, and then maybe do one craft or just focus on notebooking. You don't have to do all of these things. This is a buffet. You take what you want. You don't have to take it all. Uh, now, as far as day one, it says, read Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 through 23. What are the four types of soil? As we prepare to spend time in the word, what kind of soil do we want our hearts to be? How can we help prepare our own hearts to produce a crop yielding a hundred times what is sown? Day two, read Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. What does Jesus tell us about those who hear his words and put them into practice? Which sounds better, building your life on sand or building your life on rock? Day three is read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. How effective would a knight be without a sword? Is he going to win any battles? What does Paul tell us about the sword of the spirit? How can we arm ourselves properly? What kind of battles do you think a Christian will need to fight? And then as far as the notebooking pages go for the lower grammar, um, this is basically what it looks like. They can write out the psalm, um, how the Bible came to us. They're going to fill out their questions, do the activities that I had mentioned to you guys. And at the end of the week, um, they will think of three things to pray for regarding the world. Okay, now let's take a look at the same lesson, but for upper grammar and what they can expect. Now, a lot of this is going to be the same type of work, but as you jump a grade level, you're just going to be adding on a little extra. So they're also going to read 66 books, one story, pages 9 to 11. Um, the parent can choose to read, help your kids learn and love the Bible. Uh, they're going to memorize Psalm chapter 119, verse 10 through 12, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. 
says learning more about the word. They can work on Bible investigators, creation pages 5 through 48, um, introduction, are you a Bible investigator, and section 1, God created everything in the Bible. This is an additional uh, Bible curriculum that she has created, but again, this is just recommended, not required. Uh, learning more about the word regarding the treasure, pages 9 through 14. Learning more about the word, watch what's in the Bible, uh, DVD number one, in the beginning. They are going to notebook, what did you learn about scripture and the story of Jesus' temptation? Share some observations about the parable of the sower. Write a few notes about the wise builder and the foolish builder, and then label your spiritual armor. And then they will also creatively retell one of the parables you read this week, print or hand copy your final text and glue it to a piece of construction paper or colored cardstock. Cut out and glue on any illustrations you want to include. Save your finished papers. At the end of this year, you can bind them together into a magazine. And they will also um, read an additional book that is Window on the World. Um, they will read pages four to five, which is an introduction, and then pages 198 to 199 on Christianity. And then they will choose three things about each country or people group to pray for. Now, as far as the scripture goes, they will read Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. How did Jesus answer Satan? Do you think memorizing scripture is a good way to combat temptation? And the things that I didn't mention is that um, whatever questions they have here, you will either discuss or they can write it in their notebooks. Now, uh, day two would be read Matthew chapter 13, verse 1 through 23. What are the four types of soil? As we prepare to spend time in the word, what kind of soil do we want our hearts to be? How can we help prepare our own hearts to produce a crop yielding a hundred times what is sown? Uh, day three is read Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49. What does Jesus tell us about those who hear his words and put them into practice. Which sounds better, building your life on sand or building your life on rocks? Some of the same questions that the lower grammar kids had. Uh, day four is read Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 through 18. How effective would a knight be without a sword? Is he going to win any battles? What does Paul tell us about the sword of the spirit? How can we arm ourselves properly? And what kind of battles do you think a Christian will need to fight? And here is what the notebooking pages look like for the upper grammar students. So this is where they will go and answer all of their questions. They will fill in the worksheets. They can label the armor of God and they can write their prayers for the world. Now, the, I will say that the only thing that was extremely frustrating about printing out the notebooking pages is that they're not labeled with page numbers. And so at one point my uh, printer had gotten jammed and it was not easy finding what page number needed to be reprinted just because they're not labeled. So just be forewarned that if you do purchase the notebooking pages to really keep an eye on your printer as it is running just so you don't have um, any of those issues. Okay, now to end, I just wanted to give you guys a look at the schedule a little bit more in depth than um, what I had just covered in the flip through just because I know that some of those times can be, um, they can sound like a lot. And I don't want anybody to feel overwhelmed at this curriculum. It, at first, when I first printed it off, I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be a lot. But I think having an in-depth curriculum like this is, is gonna be good, it's gonna help grow our kids in Christ. And like I mentioned, you don't have to do all of these. Just because it says memorize or craft or read additional books does not mean you have to do those things. So I wanted to give you guys an in-depth look at the, at the schedule and just so you can see like how many minutes are allotted for each activity per grade. So for preschool and kindergarten, days one through five, you're gonna use 10 minutes to read the word then another five minutes to memorize the word. On day two, you're gonna use about 30 minutes for crafting, and then on day five, you're gonna use 30 minutes for a video. And so the total time each day will vary between 15 to about 45 minutes, just depending on what all you do. Now for the lower grammar, for three days of the week, you are going to either research or pray about the word and that's gonna take about 10 minutes. 
Then on the other two days, you will take about 30 minutes to either do a craft or learn more about the word, which is going to be a video. On all five days, you will spend about 10 minutes reading the word and discussing it, about 10 minutes uh, reviewing and memorizing the word, and then about 10 minutes notebooking the word for a total amount of 40 to 60 minutes, just depending on the day and whatever activities you do. For upper grammar, about three days are gonna be spent on researching or praying about the word. It's gonna take about 10 minutes. Uh, all five days of the week, you will spend about 20 to 30 minutes learning more about the word, crafting the word, and watching a video if you choose to get the videos. Uh, all five days of the week, you will also spend about 20 minutes reading the word and discussing it, about 10 minutes memorizing the word, another 10 minutes notebooking the word for a total of 70 to 80 minutes just depending on how long um, your child takes to do these things and whether or not you do all of them. For the dialectic stage, uh, it's going to be about 25 minutes researching and praying and learning more about the word, so a video and a research project, uh, 30 minutes reading the word and discussing it, about 15 minutes a day memorizing the word, 20 minutes a day notebooking the word for a total of about 90 minutes every day. This also goes into um, assigning high school credits. Now the rhetoric stage will spend about 25 minutes every day either watching a video, praying about the word, or researching the word, uh, 30 to 40 minutes reading and discussing the word, uh, 15 minutes memorizing God's word, 15 to 30 minutes notebooking or doing a craft, and for a total of about 85 to 110 minutes a day. And then again, it talks about how to assign uh, a credit for your high school students. Now, it also gives you a mini schedule for if you're teaching multiple levels and just how much time to allot for each grade level and what activity you're doing. So say um, the first three days, it's researching and praying about the word. It says, first, read preschool and kindergarten Bible stories aloud. Dismiss your younger students. Next, read researching the word material with grammar students. Simultaneously, dialectic and rhetoric students read their researching the word materials. And then on days four through five, uh, where you craft or watch a video, it says dialectic and rhetoric students follow the schedule for independent study. And then it goes through um, the same types of ideas for the remaining activities. So again, this curriculum gives you, it is very in-depth, I'm not going to lie, but um, I, like I said, I do think it's going to be a good one. I don't plan to do everything that they have suggested just because I do think that it'll be a lot, but I do plan to do most of it. I have not purchased all of their supplemental books, but I do have the Window on the World book that um, gives you prayer ideas for other countries. And I did purchase the 66 stories one book um, just so because I saw that it was also recommended for both the lower grammar and the upper grammar. So don't let any of this overwhelm you. <laughs> um, take from it. Remember, it's a buffet. Take from it what you want and leave the rest. If you want to take it all, by all means, do it. If you um, want something that's a little bit more than just a topical Bible curriculum, I think that that's exactly what you're going to get here. This is going to be, like I said, you guys, a deep dive. It looks amazing. Um, it definitely looks like you are going to grow and be stretched, but that's uh, just Christ's refining power, right? Where we grow, we are stretched, we walk through the fire, and we come out knowing him even better because of it. So that is it. I'm going to flip around the camera now. All right, you guys, so that is the review and flip through of Bible Road Trip. I hope you enjoyed seeing inside. If you've used this curriculum or if you're thinking about using it, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear what you thought about it or if you're excited to start using it and if the, you found this review helpful. Um, I will have reviews coming up this coming Wednesday and Friday on Apologia Math Level 2 and 6. So if you're interested in seeing those, make sure that you hit the notification bell so you're notified when uh, I post those videos. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button and I will see you again later. Bye.